BP added more than $70 billion to the U.S. economy in 2022. Investments like acquiring America's largest biogas producer, Arkea Energy, and starting up new infrastructure in the Gulf of Mexico. It's and, not or. See what doing both means for energy nationwide at bp.com slash investing in America. Did you know there's a national park just outside of our nation's capital where you can stay in cabins where future spies once stayed? The park was mothballed during World War II. This is where the spies in training would have lodged. And just down the road, there's a brewery with a spy theme. We're exploring Prince William County, Virginia, where nature, history, and food combine for a diverse getaway. Listen for these hidden gems by searching for the Travels with Darley podcast on iHeart and wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Washington in springtime, when cherry blossoms enchant the city and vibrant colors reappear around every corner. It's a time to explore and gather, to see and be seen. City Center D.C. sets a cultural pulse in the heart of downtown D.C. With fresh ways to indulge your senses, express your creativity, and thrive in what makes you unique. Enjoy a sea of pink lanterns as you stroll down Palmer Alley. Shop the latest styles from iconic brands and delight in the delectable flavors of our restaurants and eateries. Visit City Center D.C. where creativity is celebrated and everyone is welcome. Hi everyone, it's Amanda Rieger Green. Welcome to Soul Sessions. Y'all know we're in eclipse season, and guess what this is? An eclipse episode. The Libra full moon eclipse is on March 25th. It's at 3 a.m. Eastern time in the United States. So wherever you are, do the math. If you're on Pacific time, it's midnight. So it is right at that witching hour. But do the math and figure out whenever it is. This is a very powerful surge of energy that is coming through. And I'm going to break it down. I'm going to give you some practical tips and advice, but we're also going to talk about the astrology and the numerology so you can better utilize this season. Because after the full moon eclipse in early April, we have a new moon eclipse in Aries. Aries is the opposite of Libra. And if you didn't listen to last week's podcast, you should totally check it out. Or I guess it's this week's podcast where I record recorded with Hannah's Elsewhere. She is this amazing astrologer that has a wealth of information, but we talked about eclipse season. We talked about big astrological events in 2024, and we talked about the north and the south nodes of the moon. And the reason that's important as it relates to eclipse season is wherever the north and south nodes are at any given point, and they're usually in signs for about 18 months, and it's not like the north and the south pole of the moon. It's actually these calculated arbitrary points out in space and they rotate, they shift. So they're in an axis, an astrological axis for about 18 months. And they've been in the signs of Aries and Libra. The north node of the moon for all of us in the sky right now is in Aries and the south node is in Libra. What the heck does this mean? The north node always denotes where we are going, what we are evolving towards, what we are embracing. The South Node says what needs to be forgiven, what needs to be left behind, what is outdated. And there's always this great dialogue. And with this... Aries is about the individual. The sun is in Aries right now. We've got all of this vitality, this new beginning, fresh start, pioneering, individual, outside of the gates energy. Aries is about I, 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 freaking me, me, me. Okay, like nothing wrong with that unless it gets out of whack and out of balance. Hello, Libra. Libra is about the we. Aries is about the I. Libra is about the we. And how do we find the middle ground between that? And this is important right now with these massive shifts shifts we have going on in ourselves, in the collective, in planet Earth, the galaxy, consciousness. There's a lot going on, and I know you all are feeling it. I've heard from you talking to clients, talking to friends, talking to family, talking to myself. It's happening. We are all feeling these massive, massive waves of self-doubt, old deep-seated fears coming up that we thought maybe we had healed or accepted or forgiven. It's like just old stuff is coming out to play and 
I tell you what, I'm tired of playing on that playground. The old stories of I'm not enough or I don't have enough or insecurity, self-doubt, imposter syndrome, anything that's coming up for you, if it's around love and relationships, if it's your health, if it's your spirituality, if you are stuck in a job or a relationship and feeling trapped, if you're feeling inadequate or insecure, whatever is coming up for you, do not be afraid to shadow box right now. That is probably the theme of this eclipse and the energy going forward is shadow boxing is a thing. And what do I mean by that? Literally, do not be afraid to look at your fears, your gunk, your junk, all of your you know what, that stuff that's coming up that you're like, Ugh, what is this voice in my head? I thought I healed this. Anything that is triggering, jarring, keeping you in pain down or wanting to just escape, because that's what's been coming up for me. I'm like, I just can't, you know, and I'm not a real just I can't gal. But when I feel that way, it creates disempowerment. And you all know, because you've been listening to the podcast, we're in an eight universal year in numerology. And I I shared with you, it's going to be a contrasty year. Whatever you are feeling that is triggering you, it's giving you the key to what you want. And there's a lot of disempowerment, disillusionment right now. And what does the eight create? A pathway to empowerment. So any of that shadow boxing, really get it out on paper, write it down, jot it out, you know, confront the monster in the closet, the goblin in the woods, the dragon, like be the dragon slayer. Hello, Aries, courageous, brave warrior knight. You got to summon it right now. That's the pull. So with this eclipse, here's the deal. Eclipses trigger a six-month cycle, and it's astrologically a thing. It's also, I have seen it play out in my life and in many people's lives. When we have an eclipse, it either closes out or initiates something over the course of the upcoming six months. So the eclipse is the most potent time. So the couple of days leading up, the couple of days after. So just think about just before the 25th and just after the 25th, it may feel discombobulated, gunky, sloppy. This is a full moon lunar eclipse, which means the sun and the moon are in opposition. The sun is in Aries. The moon is in its opposite of Libra. And what we are feeling, the moon always denotes parts of the soul. It brings up our emotional life and well-being. The sun is about energy and vitality, expression, It's about the ego also. So it's pulling something in opposition to create an actual meeting in the middle or rebalance. So it's going to be uncomfortable. And full moons in general can also be fun and celebratory party energy. This doesn't really feel like party energy. So sorry. I mean, if you want your party hat and confetti out, get it out. And if you have got stuff to celebrate, by all means, celebrate. But if you're feeling out of sorts, out of balance, Libra, out of whack, disharmonious, or I tell you what else is coming up a lot, and this is so Libra Aries, is this isn't fair. Why is this happening? I can't handle all these things. I can't handle, fix, change everyone's emotions, everyone's stuff, and do my own things. I mean, so if you're spazzing out and doing that, I can't do it all kind of thing, that's what it's bringing up. It's unfairness, injustice, imbalances. And Libra is all about balance, harmony, and relationships. It is ruled by Venus, which is about love and beauty and poetry and artistry. Venus also rules Taurus, which is around money and finances and the material world, the sensual world. So there's a lot going on, yes, on the world stage, but I want you to bring it back to you. And you all know this, we're in a two month in numerology. March is a two month. The two is Libra energy. So we've got a lot of astro numero energy here that is kind of crescendoing around this eclipse. So what I want you to remember, full moon lunar eclipses are a time of closure, completion. You can also think about it as forgiveness. And I think about the Ho'oponopono prayer. If you know what I'm talking about, it's that Hawaiian prayer that is very, very simple. And it essentially is this, I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you, I love you. And I will tell you what, 
I was driving last week sometime, and I was thinking about some stuff that was coming up from childhood, just because I was having all this gunk come up, right? And um, I had this incident happen when I was in first grade, and it was probably one of the it was one of the toughest years of my little life up until then. I mean, I had been through my fair share of stuff, but I had a first grade teacher. She was really mean to me, like very borderline abusive, psychologically abusive. And I mean, I was in first grade and you have to know this about me. I was a really good child. I'm a Libra, hello, people pleaser. So I would rather get positive feedback, positive affirmation than be the child that is acting out to get attention that way. And we all play our things out. And believe me, I've acted out to get attention too. Uh, I have done my fair share of that in my adulthood. And my mom always said, like I looked back at this book my mom had, and she said, Amanda was a really happy child. And we talked about this before she died. She said, you were a really happy baby and you were a really happy child. Well, this was a very unhappy time in my life. And, And I won't go through all the things, but this teacher singled me out I mean, and I'm just going to say this, and it's really sad and drastic, so you know how painful this was for me. She usually wouldn't let me go to the bathroom in class. Like, if I raised my hand and asked to go to the bathroom, she would get really mad and in front of the whole class say, why didn't you go at recess? No, I'm not going to let you go. Just sit there and go to the bathroom in your pants. So when I am saying this was traumatic, and also I didn't understand it, because I thought, I'm really good. I'm really loving. I'm trying to be good and please you and do all the things. And you keep singling me out, bullying me, yelling at me. Anyway, I, I mean, I've thought about her time and time over the years. And and the beautiful part to that story is she also told my parents. And this is where the wound is for me. Okay, so I'm being really vulnerable here and sharing this with you all because it's been on my heart. And I hope I hope it helps you to shadow box because that's what I've been doing. And and this Hope Opono prayer that I'm talking about, it's going to lead back to this teacher. She told my parents that I was not intelligent, I wasn't smart enough, and I probably really was going to have severe learning disabilities and really was not going to hack it. And, you know, my parents were really shocked by this. I started talking when I was like six months old. <laughs> And they thought I was so smart. Um, and, and like, and I actually, like, I am pretty intelligent. I mean, I don't, it's not how I identify, but it triggered something in me because she also insisted I be tutored. And so my parents sent me home with her and I would go home with her and she would take me and tutor me. I mean, this was a whole year of, and my parents didn't know the extent. I didn't know what to do. They weren't trying to exacerbate the situation, and they intervened at times. I mean, it was really convoluted and messy, but it was really shameful. And she basically said, you know, you're not that smart. You're going to always need help. You know, you're very stunted mentally. And I'm in first grade. But she said that to me, and she demonstrated it to the class in in public all the time. And um, we moved that next year. And, I mean, I became a really unhappy little person um, and very confused and very shut down. And we moved to Austin, Texas. We moved back to Austin, Texas. And my parents had me repeat the first grade. Okay, quick math. The less your business spends on operations, on multiple systems, on delivering your product or service, the more margin you have and the more money you keep. Obvious. But with higher expenses on materials, employees, distribution, and borrowing, everything costs more. So to reduce costs and headaches, smart businesses are graduating to NetSuite by Oracle. NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system, bringing accounting, financial management, inventory, HR into one platform with one source of truth. With NetSuite, you reduce IT costs because NetSuite lives in the cloud with no hardware required, accessed from anywhere. You cut the cost of maintaining multiple systems because you've got one unified business management suite. And you're improving efficiency by bringing all your major business processes into one platform, slashing manual tasks and errors. Over 37,000 companies have already made the move. So do the math. See how you'll profit with NetSuite. Now through April 15th, NetSuite is offering a -a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to NetSuite.com slash stereo right now. NetSuite.com slash stereo. NetSuite.com slash stereo. Asking the right questions can greatly impact your future especially when it comes to your finances. So if you're looking for a financial advisor you can trust, certified financial planner professionals are committed to acting in your best interest. That's why it's got to be a CFP. 
Find your CFP professional at letsmakeaplan.org. All-inclusive vacations make life easy with endless eats, bottomless drinks, and never-ending fun. So booking an all-inclusive vacation should be easy too, right? That's where Apple Vacations comes in. Book your all-inclusive getaway with Apple Vacations and receive exclusive perks at select resorts. You'll find the best deals to Hyatt, Zalara, Riviera Maya in Mexico and enjoy a selection of exclusive nonstop vacation flights. Turn on easy mode at applevacations.com or call your local travel advisor to get started. Visit applevacations.com or call your local travel advisor to get started. We moved to Austin, Texas. We moved back to Austin, Texas, and my parents had me repeat the first grade. And of course, that was really shameful for me because I already thought I was not intelligent. And I got into this first grade class and there was an angel, my first grade teacher, and I will say her name. Her name was Donna Helm. And my parents went to the school, they enrolled me, and they met with her and said, you know, we've just, we've had a really tough year. Amanda apparently has a lot of learning disabilities and challenges. And and I don't know what the conversations were, but they were something to that effect. And Donna said to my parents, well, why don't you let me sit down with her and I'll work with her and we'll see what's going on. And, you know, and, and this woman was this precious Christian woman who lived her faith and walked her faith and was gentle and loving and just just a delight. And she sat down with, with me and we spent time together. And I do remember she came back to my parents and she said, there is nothing wrong with this child. She is incredibly smart and she's right where she needs to be and we're going to get her back on track. And so they put me in like second grade math classes and some other classes, but I, I stayed in first grade with her and she nurtured back my little spirit. But I still have this old part of me that maybe thinks I am inarticulate or not smart enough or not able to convey my thoughts. And my husband always says this, the formative years are called formative years for a reason. And if I think about this, you know, if I'm in, let's say, first grade, that's what, five, six years old. And my birthday is is October, so I was always younger for my age. So I was like five and six when all of this went down. And our chakras tend to develop at about seven-year increments. So the first seven years are root chakra, safety, security, needing other people to take care of you, nurture you, support you. Then you have from about seven to 14, the sacral chakra, our body and sensuality and sexuality and creativity, our emotions begin to develop. That's our emotional EQ, our emotional intelligence. Then you move into the solar plexus from 14 to 21, and we can go on from there. But all of that for me is root chakra insecurity stuff. It was stunted. You know, basically all that tape in my head, even though I had that loving teacher who nurtured me and gave me my sense of place and my sense of self again and my self-esteem, All of that is still old, hardwired stuff. And while I have thought and I had made peace with this teacher and, you know, acceptance and all the things, I've had a couple scenarios that have come up recently. And that is the memory that I keep going back to. That incident in first grade, that year and behaviors it brought out in me, stories that I tell myself in my head that are untrue, were never true, that I have hardwired into my neural pathways and my thoughts that is that old, old storyline that is not relevant today. It's also not true. And so I was, I was driving and I was thinking, like all of this flashed in front of me and it was like, oh my gosh, this all goes back to right here, this moment, and what was hardwired into my thinking and my psyche and where some of my root chakra stuff was stunted. Because the gunk that's been coming up for me lately is just old insecurity and fear. It's I'm not safe, I'm not secure, and I don't mean I'm not safe in my home or with my friends, but like, like I'm not safe in the world or and I'm not a paranoid person out in the world but like this is really deep seated karmic stuff for me right so I'm driving and I'm thinking about this teacher and I thought you know what yes I believe everything happens for a reason painful or not and my response to it and this is what I want you to think about 
during this eclipse because Libra eclipses, full moon eclipses, we are learning through the other. What is someone else reflecting back to us? And that's the energy of March, y'all, the energy of the two. What have other been people been reflecting back to you, whether you like it or not? Y'all remember that from the other podcast. You know, sometimes people will reflect back things that are beautiful about us or supportive or loving. And other times either people call us out in gentle and kind ways or they're just ugly and unkind and rude and abrasive. And what is that teaching you? Instead of saying, what is this doing to me? What is this reinforcing in me? And I had my little reinforcement moments this month, but I'm thinking about her as I'm driving And all of a sudden, I was like, oh, my gosh. All of that, I don't know why it happened. I don't think I ever did anything wrong or misbehaved or did anything to bring that treatment upon myself. And I remembered, oh, my gosh, hurt people hurt people. You know, and I must have reflected something back in her, an insecurity or an old trauma or an old pain, and I was the punching bag or the scapegoat. And I didn't do anything wrong. And in that moment, the Hopopono prayer came up in my mind. And I haven't said that prayer or thought of that name in forever. And it was like, <gasps> and I immediately said, and there's nothing I can think of to be sorry for. Like, I, I don't think I did anything wrong. But to me, it's like maybe it was something from a past life. Maybe there was a karma being reconciled. I may never know if or what I did to evoke that behavior and that treatment from her. But immediately it was like, I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you, I love you. And it was like, I was just compassionately setting her free, but setting myself free. Like, I don't want to come back and behave from that storyline. So what for you, and like I said, I just went like deep and true and raw and all the things like that, that's a really intimate personal trauma that I shared. And I'm not sharing it because I don't have good boundaries. I'm sharing it because I know right now everybody has stuff coming up that is old, it's karmic, it's rooted. It is stuff that is saying, do you really believe this old stuff? Do you believe these old stories? Are you ready to root them out and root them out with your heart, with compassion, with, I'm sorry, forgive me, thank you, I love you. And I didn't pick up the phone and call this woman. Like, this was just in my heart. And I started crying in the car, and I felt free, and I felt love, and I set her spirit free. I mean, it was a whole moment, right? It was a whole moment. There's, like, blue bonnets in Texas. So it was, like, this, you know, the beautiful, like, blue bonnets. I mean, I'm, like, in transcendence while I'm driving. But I just felt better. I don't have to understand why. I don't have to know or have some reconciliation with this lady. I have it in my heart, and I really hope she's had a happy life. I wish the best for her, but something in it shifted me. So this is a full moon where I want you to look at what's coming up for you. Look at what's being reflected back. Look at what is bringing up deep-seated fear, insecurity, outdated old stories, and sit down and see where you can set those free. So you can create those new neural pathways, rewrite the stories, and become this version of you that you already are, this dynamic, infinite, empowered, 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 infinite soul in this human body with messy, frail human beings, because we all are, the perfectly imperfect stuff, and see if you can root out these things and transform your energy field from the heart. That is imperative. So this full moon, and I want to tell you something I do on full moons, especially the eclipses. When I do whatever I do for my full moon, my little ceremonies with my crystals and candles and moonlight, and I mean, I've done all sorts of things all over the years. 
a lot of times what I will do is I will do my full moon journaling and intentions and clearing. And this is a really good moon for clearing. So getting out all this shadow stuff, the shadow boxing, get it all out, get it on paper. I am healing. I am recognizing. I am letting go of. I am forgiving. I am practicing compassionate acceptance. I am neutralizing this energy. I am open and willing to let go of, to surrender to, to rewrite behaviors that are limiting my fill in the blank, joy, happiness, peace, love, ease, success, prosperity, health, well-being, transcendence, anything, anything that is coming to you, write that stuff out, get it on paper. And I want you to put it out under the moon for three days. So as you know, the eclipse actually happens in the wee hours of the morning. So sure, you can get up if you want to do it. I have, I do that sometimes. I may even do it on this, this moon. I may get up at, it'll be 2 a.m. in Texas. I might get up and do it at 2 a.m. Actually, I probably will because it's because I'm a Libra. So it's, you know, it's Libra full moon. It's our half birthday. And Aries, this is like your opposition time. So it's also really healthy for you all to create some balance and inclusion. And remember to ask people to help you because you all are so stinking independent. Plus, you all are fire starters, but you don't always finish things. And you know it. You're genius. You got fiery ideas. You're spitting them out left and right. But you got to have people to help you bring them to fruition. You got to have collaboration and partnership. That's why we have the balance of the axis, the independent and the we, and how do those two come together. But put them out under the moon, write your stuff, and charge that paper up. That's what I do. I charge the intentions. I put them out with my crystals. I usually make a grid. I might light a candle, whatever I'm doing, and I leave them out for like three nights. Even if it rains, I don't care about it. My husband's always like, it rained on your journal. I'm like, don't worry about it. It's it's supposed to be that way. So get it out under the moonlight for a few nights. And also, as a reminder, I would wait to detox and write out your intentions and your healing and do your shadow work and journaling. I would wait until after the eclipse is exact. So at, if it's 3 a.m. your time, whatever time it is, wait until after that and then do your journaling. So when you wake up on the morning of the 25th, that's a great time to do your journaling and then go put your paper outside. I know it's gonna be sunny all day, but charge it up for the next couple of nights under the moon. That's what I would do, that's what I will do. And last but not least, this eclipse is at five degrees. And if you remember when I talked about some of the other moons, we've had a lot of five degree moon energy. The energy of the five is about freedom. The energy of the five is about a lot of things, but in this moon, it feels like we are healing relationships that are imbalanced or things that are imbalanced within ourselves and within our big, bright, beautiful spirit. So the ego and the higher self, we're bringing those into balance and harmony in a more balanced, harmonious way. So it's a moon of healing. And what is the gateway through that? The numerology code, the five degrees of freedom. It's about greater freedom, greater flexibility, greater creative self-expression, widening your perspective. The five is always about a shift in perspective. So to me, there's quantum leap energy here. There's leveling up energy here, and it's totally in the field. So I hope this was helpful, and I really want everyone to take some time to journal, to see what fears are coming up for you, what is confronting, what's scaring you, what's keeping you in inertia or stasis. And I want you to have the courage to get it out of your heart and and out of your head, out of your head and your heart, and then heal it with your heart, heal it with your compassion, heal it with your, with the infinite potential that you have to create greater freedom, greater empowerment, and greater propulsion forward. Thanks for joining me, everyone. If you are in Austin on May 7th, I've got a live event. It's going to be a blast. We're going to do live readings, Q&A. And if you are looking to connect with your tribe, up-level your energy, your consciousness, if you've got questions about how your intuition is coming in, how it is 
integrating into your body the experiences you are having come because this is the place to ask those questions. And if you've got those questions, other people do. Come join us. Have fun. It's at VUCA, Austin, Texas, May 7th. You can get tickets at soulpathology.com forward slash tickets. I hope you'll join us. Take care and be well, everyone. Did you know there's a national park just outside of our nation's capital where you can stay in cabins where future spies once stayed? The park was mothballed during World War II. This is where the spies in training would have lodged. And just down the road, there's a brewery with a spy theme. We're exploring Prince William County, Virginia, where nature, history, and food combine for a diverse getaway. Listen for these hidden gems by searching for the Travels with Darlie podcast on iHeart and wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Washington in springtime, when cherry blossoms enchant the city and vibrant colors reappear around every corner. It's a time to explore and gather, to see and be seen. City Center DC sets a cultural pulse in the heart of downtown DC with fresh ways to indulge your senses, express your creativity, and thrive in what makes you unique. Enjoy a sea of pink lanterns as you stroll down Palmer Alley, shop the latest styles from iconic brands, and delight in the delectable flavors of our restaurants and eateries. Visit City Center DC where creativity is celebrated and everyone is welcome. You deserve to treat yourself, so turn your tax refund into a U-Fund and give yourself a Straight Talk Wireless Extended Silver Unlimited plan and get a new Samsung Galaxy A14 on them. You can get a great everyday value on wireless with Straight Talk's Unlimited plan starting at $25 a line per month for four lines. You'll save so much, you'll be enjoying that refund all year long. It's the refund that keeps on refunding. Find Straight Talk at straighttalk.com or at your local Walmart store. Taxes and fees not included. Offer valid through 4 24 while supplies last. Online only. Must purchase a Straight Talk Extended Silver Unlimited plan to qualify. Limit of five phones per customer. Family plan discount with four lines all on the Silver Unlimited plan. Not combinable with auto pay discount.